her arm. Hi Sandy, hi Rosie, hi guys. Excuse me, Sandy. I got some really special, awesome Easter surprises today in the mail from someone. Someone very, very special. Sorry, Storm District the camera. Is that still on me? For um, from someone very, very special, and I have to tell you about it. I will message you and tell you about it later. What all I got and stuff. was really, really super surprised and really excited. Okay guys, let's start off with our prayer requests. Um, and we'll try to make the video shorter today, so I'm going to try to talk less and get done faster. Um, please keep Chris in your prayers. He is home. He's doing well. He went to have his first round of blood work and stuff done after he got out of the hospital which was yesterday, and you know he's got to have his blood work done every day and, you know, get medicine or whatever every day. But um, he is still home doing good. Um, Barb is in rehab, doing good as far as I know. Um, please pray for Sandy for strength and comfort. Please pray for little Rosie as well. Um, please pray for Sherm. He had a very bad attack last night. And Sandy, I want to ask you about that as well, if you don't mind. Um, I'll ask you later, but I'll tell you guys. I didn't know it was going on, or I would have went in there and tried to help him by cooling him off the cold rag and stuff. But he, he had this attack before, but that's when we went to this hospital that are really stupid people there. Oh, don't even get me started with that hospital. Um, it's a very small hospital. They've only got two beds in the whole place for people to spend the night. But the doctors there are full of wax. I've been there several times, and they've always had to send me somewhere else. But they took Sherm in there and said something was wrong with his heart. The doctor told me it was his heart, definitely his heart. He took me out in the hallway and told me. I said, so what do you think's wrong with him? And we weren't even there five minutes. And he took me out in the hallway and said, well, I think it's his heart. Real snotty like that. And I'm like, okay, you know, and I was all scared. And I was crying because they wouldn't let me ride in the ambulance with him because they were going to send him to the bigger hospital, of course. And they wouldn't let me go. So I finally talked, you know, Mom and Ma, or Cindy I mean, into taking me up there, which was a long way. But anyway, they had gave him nitroglycerin pills and nitro through IV there at that hospital before they shipped him off. And he was doing good, perfectly fine, before they gave him that nitro through the IV. And, and as soon as they did that, it wasn't probably 10 minutes later, he turned pale white and was sweating like crazy and said, Honey, I think I'm dying. And he was like really weak. He was like passing out. I thought for sure he was going to die. He said, please get somebody. So I ran out in the hallway and started hollering. And I said, can somebody come help? And they said, what's wrong? And I said, look. And they ran out there and got bags of more IVs of this plane, you know, that water stuff. And started hooking up, hooking him up to even more water stuff. And finally he snapped back out of it. Scared us to death. Because his blood pressure and stuff dropped really super low. I mean, everything, it scared me to death. But anyway, he was on, he was in the bathroom last night, and he said he was sitting there, and all of a sudden, he just started pouring the sweat, and he couldn't hardly see. Everything was really, really blurry, and his ears were clogged up. He couldn't hear anything, and he thought he was going, he thought he was going to pass out. He thought he was going to, he felt that feeling like he was going to die like he did in the hospital that time. And they gave him all that nitro. And Cindy said that his sugar was high. I don't know. I thought maybe his sugar was too low. I thought it was his heart, but they keep saying his heart's fine. So, if you don't see this before I ask you, Sandy, I'm, I'm going to ask you about that. Because it's really making me, it's, I really, really am worried about that. So please keep him in your prayers, guys. And 
because, you know, that first attack was just from the nitro. So this one, I just don't know. Because sometimes the sugar's like 200 and sometimes the sugar's like 80 something. And he was eating M&Ms before he went to bed, but only a few. He didn't even eat a whole pack. And he eats other sweet stuff sometimes and it doesn't bother him. So I, I don't know what his sugar would have. I don't know why it would have been too too low or too high, I mean, because he only had like a couple of M&Ms. I'm afraid it might be too low because he's on, you know, medicine for diabetes. But I don't know. I hope we can figure it out. It scared me to death. Next time, I hope he's able to holler at me because I was asleep and didn't know it. He couldn't even holler for me, he said. He couldn't, he couldn't talk. He was just like out of it, couldn't do anything. Just like in a big daze, you know, like you're dying, just going, withering away. And I would have went in there and, you know, tested his sugar and everything. <sighs> God, he's just, we're just so scared about it happening again tonight. Because they don't go back to the doctor again until the 31st. And they don't have nothing before them. So I couldn't get him in before that. And he only seen the dermatologist today, so. Which she, by the way, for those knots on the back of his head that keep reoccurring, she just put him on a different antibiotic that she, she wants to keep him on. Um, and a cream, which I'm guessing it's an antibiotic cream as well, but it's different than what our other doctor gave us as well. <clears throat> and he's not supposed to be in the direct sunlight that much, so. But um, I think he's taking his sugar now. But those are our prayer requests, guys, along with April and Linda Thacker and Kenny Wellman. He's still doing really bad. He's still in the hospital where he had another bad attack, you know. So he's in the hospital again. And I think that is it. I am sorry if I forgot anybody. I'm just like so super worried about Sherm. It scared me to death, you know. Imagine how it scared him. He was finally able to get up after a while and make it to get a wash rag cold and to put it on his head. And he said after a while, setting him, you know, laying him back on the toilet with cold bush rag on his head. He finally started getting his hearing back and everything and then he knew he was going to be okay. Scared to death. So let's get started the opening the Bible reading with our um, prayers today. Brother Jesus, Father, we are getting ready to start our Bible reading of course and we would like for you to be with us as we do this Bible reading. And we would like you to open the hearts of the ones listening to this Bible reading and watching this video today. And the ones who are not, that the people that are watching this video and hearing your words today may tell others. Please watch over all the people that are watching this video to um, help them with the problems that they may be having in their life, health-wise or any other way. Please watch over the people we have on our prayer list, Father. Please help us find out what is wrong with Sherm, because I really don't want something bad to happen to him. Please let us find out what what it is and get it. Let's get it fixed. And pray that it's, I pray that it's nothing very serious, because he's already got so much wrong with him already. So please help the doctors figure out what it is, Father. I know you can. I know you already know. But please help them so we can get it fixed. And just be with us during this reading today, Father, I pray. And we love you, Brother Jesus and Father, with all our heart and soul. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get started. Today is going to be kind of a sad reading. It is a sad reading. We'll be talking a little bit there, finishing up. Um, chapter 14 
at the top. Well, we're not finishing it up. We'll be going on from a little bit where we left off yesterday, is what I'm saying. And then we're going to go where Jesus predicts Peter's denial and Gethsemane, which really breaks my heart. Because you can, by my words, you can hear by the words Jesus speaks to our Father how his heart is really aching about knowing what's going to happen to him. And then today you'll see Jesus arrested as well. So let's get started here with Mark. Mark chapter 14, verses 22 through 52. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. This is the Last Supper. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. Which you know was truly, you know, breaking Jesus' heart when he heard this because he already knew what was going to happen. Now listen, listen to Gethsemane and see if this does not tug at your heart. Now, Jesus is our brother. Picture this being your brother, if you love your brother dearly, which he really is our brother, but I'm just saying, if you have a brother here on earth that you are really, really close to, picture this being him. And if you're not close to your brother, picture it be the person that you're most close with in this world. Picture this being them in Jesus' place when I'm reading this to you. It'll help you get a better understanding of what Jesus was feeling. They went to a place called Bethsaida, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to deeply be distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. He was like, Father, please take this away so this doesn't have to happen to me. But not my will be done, but your will be done, Father. If you still want it to be done, it shall be done the way you want it to be. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more Jesus went away and prayed the same thing. And he came back again and found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, 
Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. But I heard a click when you left. When after you left. Still on? Jesus arrested. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and teachers of the law and the elders. Who other than, right? Now the betrayer had agreed a signal with them, thinking Jesus is stupid, that Jesus already knew what was going on. He thought he could go up and betray Jesus, with Jesus not even knowing that's what he was doing. What an idiot. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. And that's what we're stopping with Mark for today. You're thinking, what happens next? You have to wait till tomorrow's Bible reading. And I'm just going to say it will not be a happy one. What Jesus has to go through. Our song today is Psalm 52. For the director of music, a mascot of David, when Doeg the Edomite had gone to Saul and told him, David has gone to the house of Amalek. Why do you boast of evil, you mighty hero? Why do you boast all day long? You who are a disgrace in the eyes of God? You who practice deceit? Your tongue plots destruction. It is like a sharpened sword. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than speaking the truth. You love every harmful word, you deceitful tongue. Surely God will bring you down to everlasting ruin. He will snatch you up and pluck you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear. They will laugh at you, saying, Here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold, but trusted in his great wealth and grew strong by destroying others. But I am like an olive tree, flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name, for your name is good. And that was Psalm 52. All right. And our Proverbs today is Proverbs chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Finished up chapter 10 yesterday. The Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor with him. When pride comes then disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. 
Okay, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. That was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a blessed day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.